Welcome back to the cargo channel. Welcome to sunny but extremely cold New York and that's why I'm in the car waiting for a fellow car enthusiast to bring his sick Evo 9 so we can review it, take a few photos of it and take it for a ride. Stick around, this should be interesting. This guy is my friend uh, Marlon mm -hmm. and he is the owner of that sick Evo 9 that you just saw. Uh, so I have a few questions for you about how, what made you first buy an Evo and then uh, what the hell did you do to it to look so sick? <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for the compliment. Uh, whew, to be honest, I didn't even want the Evo. <laughs> That's honestly, I didn't. I really didn't want the Evo. I was dying for a 350Z. I had just came out of a Prelude. Um, I wanted to go rear wheel drive, like Time Attack rear wheel drive. So I was aiming to get a Nismo 350Z, and um, I was car shopping and I was looking everything up for my options for 20 grand. And my mom was just like, I, at that time, I needed my mom's help to get the car. So she was like, Oh, I'm not signing paperwork that has nothing to do with a four door car. So I said, Okay. You want a four-door car? Let's get an Evo. And how is Evo affordable, though? How much did you pay for it? Um, I paid twenty twenty thousand from Brooklyn Auto Sales. All right. And they were great when I was getting the car. And maintaining it is maintaining is the biggest in the world. I know, and I drive a Benz. Maintaining <laughs> Benz is really expensive yeah, too. Yeah, like every little thing is. I call this like this car has to have at least one problem. Like I just fixed everything on the car, wake up this morning, broke my door. Oh. So it always has like one problem. Well, that's why I never fix everything, everything on my cars. Yeah, I always leave one or two things that are messed up. So uh. at least I have something. Because <laughs> if the car fix. is perfect, it, it's going to break. Exactly, that's what I always say. So what was the first thing you did to it when you bought it? Uh, first thing I did to it was I, changed, I took off the suspension. So I had bought it with... Um, TN gravel sports something something the guy wanted to be the guy who owned it before me was trying to make it into a rally car I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a rally car I don't know if it wasn't a rally car, but it came with rally suspension and it doesn't look like it was rallied from the on by the undercarriage But it had rally suspension. So I changed the suspension. I was on D12 um, at D2s when I was on D2s one day I was driving in I was on the FDR I was coming under the tunnel where that 59th Street is, and there's one big pothole, oh. and it was raining. And I was on Falcon Eye Zenny's, and I started to hydroplane, and I hit the pothole. The pothole grabbed my wheel and shifted it this way, oh, broke wow. my coil over. Um, I almost hit the I almost hit the guardrail, and then I ended up driving the car home, not knowing that my coil over was broken in half with the tire like this and I just drove, drove home five miles per hour pop, 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 like if I was static <laughs> hero uh, I saw that car I mean I'm gonna put the pictures on last year and it was a blue color and it had different white wheels mm -hmm. uh, which was also sick but I, I, I dare say I like this setup a little better because yeah. the car looks cleaner in white mm -hmm. and what made you change the color um, I had uh, it's from Porsche. It's not lazuli blue. It's uh, it starts with an A. It was I can't remember the name now. It was a different blue, and then this blue. I wanted I mean this blue, this white. I wanted a really bright white, and I was aiming for the brightest white I could find. And one day I like was just thinking like, damn, I really need this white, and I see a R8 fly by me. But it was like middle of the night. And the only thing I saw was his white. And I was like, I need that white. 
and I got that white. So this one's an uh, it's twenty. It should be the twenty seventeen Arctic white for the R eight. Okay. And so it's painted. So it's painted. It's paint. Okay. And it's twenty seventeen Arctic white. But then when I realized that I wasn't really white was when one day I went to do a Bear Mountain trip, and there's this girl named uh, Monet. She's got a white uh, F Sport IS three fifty, and I parked right next to her. And I'll send you the picture so you can put it up. I'm a completely different shade of white. I'm an off white. Okay. Her white is brighter than mine. She has uh, that Lexus white. It's okay. It's like a platinum white. So I'm not even that white. I wanted to go whiter. Well, that color is nice, but I, I, I personally like it. Yeah, thank you. But another thing I noticed is that's not the standard body kit that comes on an Evo 9. So, the, what did you do to it? The rear is the U is the JDM rear. The front is actually a. It's not stock. So I had four different bumpers. Okay. I had my stock and Evo 9 bumper. I had two C West bumpers that I broke both in horrible New York streets. You oh. Could, okay. I know you can relate. I can. I uh, my bumper lost. broke, so I had to put this. Uh, E63 bumper on the front, mm -hmm. and I still haven't painted it, but wow. that's a, a whole new project that <laughs> I I'm feel that. undertaking. Yeah, I had two C, I had one real C West bumper, and I had one fake C West bumper, like a wrap, because I was like, there's no point in buying, like, um, there's no point in buying spending a, another $700 on a C West bumper when I could just spend four if it's gonna break, anyways. Yeah, and the second one only lasted me three days, and yep three days I was going to my mechanics I get onto a little ramp and when I got onto the ramp the construction guy was like oh you're fine when I feel the ramp sinking and the, the wheel sinking and I was spinning into the asphalt and it had a metal plate on the bottom and just came up and broke the whole bumper oh boy so this bumper is a stock Evo 9 bumper with a bumper cutout but it's all fiberglass okay this one I had to buy in a rush because I was trying to make it to AC so I was just like, you know what, let me pick this bumper up, paint it, and then I'm going to buy, my next goal is to buy an Evo 8 bumper, because I like the Evo 8 bumper, because if you look at the sides, it has, um, it has like a body curb into it. Okay. And it's a little rounder. I also want to do Ubi Made Canard Kids, because my giant wings doesn't really fit the body, but I don't want to go wide body, so I want to get a big canard kit, so it kind of blends in the wing just a little better. All right. Um, where did you get the wing from? What, so, what kind of wing is that? This is a Big Country Labs 1850 wing. Um, I bought it off my friend Oscar, who had it on his Evo 10. Okay. And this is my second wing. What happened to the first one there? I the, first one, <laughs> the first one I bought off of a friend named Brad. It was a Voltex, but it was from Viz Racing. It was the Voltex rep. And it had a slight crack, like maybe like this big. And one day I'm on the highway with my friend, and we're doing maybe... What, one 55. Oh, yeah, 55. Yeah, we're doing a solid 55. And I feel the wing start lifting, and then the car goes boom and drops to the floor. Oh, and shit. I'm like, what the hell happened to the car? I look back, and the wing's, and the wing's in the air. Oh, half okay. the wing is in the air, spinning like that. And the other half is like this on the bottom. Oh, shit. And that's why you don't buy... Uh, most most fake parts. I have like a, a theory when it comes to fake parts, especially oh. if you live in like an area like New York. Yeah, because fake parts don't last as much as real ones. Exactly. To be honest. But my thing is, if you're doing it safety wise, if you're doing real parts safety wise, motor wise, certain arrow parts like wings, um, maybe bumpers, but when you're doing like little things then okay well not little things big like important things real parts are super important yeah well, suspension uh, suspension wheels mm -hmm. you know because cracked wheel could get you in a lot it, of trouble exactly but like if you're doing body kits and you live in new york honestly you might as well go rap if you do time attack yeah they will get oh, destroyed though. they're gonna get destroyed like a lot of it is i i try to build my evo on what i can afford and i respect everybody for what they can afford me, I can afford real motor parts, but body parts, yeah. it's gonna break anyways. So I rather spend four hundred dollars on a on a rep bumper that looks good, than I know comfortably knowing that I can maybe take my car out one day, I might hit a bad pothole, break the bumper, buy another bumper, 
than having to buy a thousand dollar bumper and breaking it on the street. Well, it hurts less if you break the semi affordable bumper. Yeah, the yeah. semi affordable. I Because none of them are really, really cheap, but at least it's cheaper than the real thing. Exactly. Now, uh, sticking to the outside, mm -hmm. what kind of wheel setup are we rocking? I'm running 18, 18 by 9 STRs uh, 1-09 on uh, Nito, Nito NTO 5s, 255, 35s, 18. I went... Square setup? Square setup. Because, all yeah, around. all wheel drive, yeah. Yep, and all then I have a 20 mil spacer on both sides because the car, the wheels are supposed to fit perfectly. They're, they're plus 22. I think you can go plus 25 is the max, but I went plus 22, and when I put the wheel on, the, the style of the face of the wheel kept hitting of the kept hitting my um, Brembo's so I had to put my space in. oh okay mm -hmm. oh I'm looking out because the car is parked right outside and I wanted to relate to what uh, Marlon is saying but all right let's move to the that I think that pretty much covers the outside yeah, right the outside. and uh, well, oh, hood we missed the hood oh right? the hood yeah the hood is just a uh, Viz Racing Viz, it's the Viz, Viz Racing Varus Varus rep Okay. Carbon fiber, painted over. Uh, when I bought it, it had a big, ugly, nasty, like crack in the in the clear coat. And when we sanded it down, the carbon didn't look fresh. Like okay. you know how carbon has that fresh, fresh look. That's the only way I'll keep something carbon. Like my wing, if you take off all the salt and ugliness, it's fresh, fresh carbon. That that carbon was horrible. So I just repainted it. I didn't. I like the panda look is cool, but everybody does it too yeah so uh, to be honest the uh, this looks great too like uh how you call it, the stormtrooper stormtrooper yeah, oh storm i haven't trooper been called look. that yeah <laughs> it look it looks dope thank you um inside mm -hmm. what is your seat setup um they're bride vios twos okay. uh, i have takata harnesses from the four four point four harness point harness i've got a rally art Rally Art steering wheel, steering wheel, which is the um, basically like the Mugen of okay. the Mugen of Mitsubishi, which is uh -huh. our Rally Art for us. The tuning, the the in company tuning, right? Yep. yep. All right. And then I have just ordered because I thought they were gonna come today. I, it would have been great to put it on, but there's a pro, there's a company called Zar, Zarlux, Zalux, Zalux, something like that. That they make the quick release kit. So I got the. I got red extens red extensions for my like for my uh, wipers and for my blinkers. Okay. And then I got an um the quick release kit to take out. That's like the rally style. And they were having a great Black Friday sale, so it's all that is just like a nice bright apple red. I bought a few stuff on Black Friday and they still haven't arrived yet because yeah. guess what? Everybody buys shit on I Black Friday. Sorry. Everybody buys stuff on Black Friday. We gotta keep it PG thirteen. <laughs> We're I from guess. New York, it's hard to keep things PG thirteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um What are the little pods on the oh, the AEM? Um, AEM, all of them are AEMX. Um I have my boost gauge, my wideband and my oil pressure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously you have no back seat because race car. <laughs> yeah. And uh, are you putting a cage in it? I plan to do a cage. I really want to do a completely full cage, but one money. Oh. Cages, full cage is expensive. And two, I'm still trying to figure out what, because I want to keep the car white and red. Okay. But I also want to add hints of gold. So once I figure out my color scheme and maybe around springtime, I'm hopefully going to get a full cage. Awesome. Yeah, because I need it to match. Like I have. Um, my shift boot, my shift boot comes from mixed stitches, which is a another evil is another evil um, evil person in the community. She makes like amazing, amazing shift boots, and she made me a, a red and a red and yellow one, which the yellow looks more gold, but it looks great. It came out amazing, and then my front bar is also going red. My front of uh, crossbar and basically everything else is red and gold in there. No back seats, no nothing. Yeah. Now we're getting into the deep rabbit hole of the engine tuning. <sighs> Let me start you on that one. <sighs> I'm sure we're gonna stay here for a little bit on this yeah. one, but uh, 
what was the first 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 of all was the engine stock when you bought it uh completely stock the only thing it had was exhaust and megan uh turbo manifold okay yep and uh, then <laughs> and then after that i put i got a hks intake and then after i got my hks intake i switched my coil packs and then after that it was just the, the rolling hill of uh i have a ported hold on i brought out my list yeah i have a list you're prepared yeah it's, it's basically long story short it's full bolt-ons but it's a stock block stock head hks intake uh right now i'm running a gretty intercooler it's a three and a half inch Sh um back built short route piping that's my mechanic who, who does all my car uh, does all my installations and everything okay um i'm on speed density on a four bar map with a hks blow up valve spooling up coil packs 450 wallbro fuel pump which is a Excuse me. Beast. <laughs> Beast. It's fine. No, it's it, it's horrible for the for the. So the battery, right? Yeah. The but battery. Uh, where were we at? Fuel we, pump. Fuel pump. So oh, the. My yeah. Cursed fuel pump. The B of a fuel pump. Yup, my fuel pump. First time, the wiring lit on fire, like from all inside. Wiring lit up on fire. Then. We fixed that. Lumbo style. <laughs> exactly. We fixed that and I I came up with the genius idea. I was like, oh, I should see full my car just to clean out everything for the E85. So I ran out the E85. I'm also on E85. Um, put it on 93 and see foam my car. Two days later, I guess the sea foam took everything, at, like all the gunk out the bottom of my, uh, my gas tank. And it clogged my fuel pump. I was driving one day, wiring goes again because it was taking, it was surging so much power because it was so clogged that wiring just gave out. So I put a zero gauge, cleaned out my fuel tank. Um, I put a, uh, well, Byron put a, a, a relay. So if it surges, it just goes back. And knock on wood trim, everything's going decently fine with that fuel pump for now. So E85, E85. Uh, I run 371 to the wheels, 360 torque, conservative tune, like extremely. If I want to, I can touch 400 without cams. But me and Chameleon came. Uh, Chameleon tuned, by the way. Okay. He's a uh, great tuner. He took his time. We spent maybe eight hours tuning my car because I had bought you my. You send me his info. I'll put it down uh, underneath yeah. so people can. People yeah. that are interested in, they yeah. can hit him up and he's, get he's their evil tuner. Stuff. He won't tune your like. You can ask him to do things, and he'll be like, "Don't be dumb." Yeah. He'll be like, make your car last. I wanted to shoot flames. I wanted to be boosted by gear. I came in with that whole like, sixteen-year-old mindset, like, "Oh my God, I'm getting my first tune." And that man humbled me. That man taught me what it was to, like, what to have a proper tune is because honestly, knock on. Knock on wood trim again. It's been a year. Year no, year and some change. When I got tuned, I'll send you the video of me getting tuned. And he um my coil packs were all blown when I went there. We couldn't figure out figure that out because it made no sense. Um then the car wasn't running right. Uh the car wasn't tuning right. We literally eight hours of just us hitting the dyno, hitting the dyno, hitting the dyno, hitting the dyno. He took his time, didn't even overcharge me for it. Like, he wanted to figure out the problem, gave me a great tune. And honestly, I have a lot of friends tuned by a lot of different people. And I'm at 125,000 miles. I know people with 90K on the dash, 60K on the dash is on their second, third, fourth motor. And I beat the living crap out of this car. Yeah, I noticed. And the spooling noises that things make are just, ah. <laughs> uh... Thank you, really thank good. You. It's gonna get better. I just ordered a turbo shield. Okay. And I'm. Everybody's like, oh, why are you gonna take off your intake? You know the sound it makes. It's just <laughs> straight. The moment you hit the gas, it's just. And I can't have the popping every time I shift, so I'm at least gonna have my my turbo spool. That's nice. Um, yeah, it's good to have the conservative tune because you know what? It's uh, even though you can rebuild it it's not cheap and it's not pleasant to not have your car right exactly. and let's face it we are not racing it on the street 
every day. Mm -hmm. We keep it under 55 always. And the thing is, if you take it to a track, you can upload a different tune. But how often do we really go on the track? I don't, because I've done. Uh, I have autocross seat time. The goal is to get on the track, because. Time attack is my goal, my main goal. That's why this car, it used to be my daily driver, retired it from daily driving it. Now it's like a weekend warrior till I get to the track. Once I get out of the track and buy my truck, because okay. I'm, I'm planning to get a tow, like a truck to tow my car, it's going to be a complete, just straight time attack. Uh, okay, then you can go bananas with mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Okay, so I think that pretty much covered most of the car. Anything else you want to add that you've done that you really want to share that stands out in the car um i guess my future plans my future plans i want to do a small i want to support a lot of small businesses because small businesses are they're overlooked especially like especially in I, the car community everybody yeah. goes for the big businesses and i want to really really support small businesses so my goal for next summer is to work with a lot of small businesses to do a livery i'll send you a picture like the one i want to do but like there's the voltex time attack car which has like let's say on my rear on the rear wing it says voltex and huge okay. i want to do there's a girl in california her name is evil maddie gorgeous evil um she has a company named i think it's endgame endgame it should be endgame i'll send you the yeah the I'll, I'll put all those uh, right underneath here mm -hmm. their instagrams because <clears throat> instagram today is the best place to reach mm -hmm. people i guess and she has her her logo is is effing decent and then it's the she has two options the effing decent and then the the end game the big banner so i want to put the effing decent because it's 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 effing decent car it is you a know? decent car it's more so, than that you put it. I want to put it where they usually put the rally art logo, where it'll be the spirit of competition. It's in the corner of the hood, but instead of that, I want to put effing decent, and then in the oh. back of the wing, the end game, because it's 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 a nice sticker. It's a nice decal. It's it looks so great. And then after that, just a bunch of small businesses. I even bought a baby Yoda. Like I'm obsessed with baby Yoda. Oh yeah. So, so am I. <laughs> I'm highly Who obsessed with these baby days? Yoda. So I bought a little baby Yoda peeker, and it's gonna be peeking out the back window. Awesome. Yeah. So. See how that goes. And what I think, small businesses are really good and uh, we don't give them as much love these days. But to be honest, they have really, really quality product for mm -hmm. a fraction of the price of the real businesses, exactly. the big businesses. Because those are mostly money oriented. And then small businesses, they want to be discovered. So they do re they do put out really good products. And, and the quality is always like, yeah. you can actually, when you're with small businesses, you can actually talk to someone about what you want what do you want to do small businesses is like is that it gives you that personal connection to what you're buying i i like that idea i like that ideology as well um if you guys if you guys like today's video and you like this man's yeah. sick car uh annihilate that thumbs up button because yeah, that helps a lot like, yeah follow me on instagram spool and more Spool and Mark. Spool and Mark on Instagram. Sick evil. Thank you. Go ahead and give him the love. And if you guys don't mind subscribing, subscribe, hit the bell for a lot more videos to come. And this is great. It's been Thank a delight having you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Have a great day.